Hi there, morning. Um, it's just been announced Manuel Pellegrini is the new West Ham United manager. So just a quick reaction to that from me and a little talk about the playing side of things. Right, I'll kick off by saying I'm not trying to be negative in any way, shape or form about this appointment. I just can't hide the fact that he wasn't my first choice, second or third. Um, I still think it's a good appointment and a step in the right direction. I take him over Moyes any day of the week, purely on playing style alone, if anything. Um, I just really wanted us to go out and get the next young, up-and-coming, innovative manager. I wanted us to go and get the next Pochettino or Klopp, who have come to the Premier League and they've done something a little bit different. I really like the sound of that, sort of building a project. That's what I wanted to see us do. But nonetheless, he's here now, so I do still think it's a good appointment, like I say. It's a step in the right direction, not quite where I wanted us to go, but but a good appointment nonetheless. Um, we're definitely going to see some good football, that, that's, that's assured, I think, which is, which is great news after the absolute rubbish that we endured last season under David Moyes. Uh, he just went to pot in the end. I could understand what he was doing at first, Moyes. I don't want to talk too much about Moyes, by the way. I'm just going to quickly talk about the playing style and the fact that I sort of backed him to begin with. He had a quick turnaround of results with beating Chelsea at home, etc. And I could see what he's doing. I thought, right, he's playing this five at the back. He's sort of setting up defensively because he's come in and he's seen that we're leaking too many goals and he didn't particularly have the trust in the defence. You can understand that. But you can put up with that for so long. There was a point in the season where we started climbing the table a little bit. And he just still wasn't interested in changing his ways at all. We still saw that same silly five at the back. All the way up until the last game of the season. So there's no evidence to suggest that he would have changed. I think we'd have seen the same next season under him. So, so he had to go. No doubt about it. So that brings me on to um, one of our targets, which was Rafa Benitez. And that is the exact reason why he was never on my radar. I never fancied Benitez, and that was the reason why. I thought it was important that one of the main attributes of the new manager coming in was the fact that they supported and liked attacking football. So that ruled Benitez straight out for me. He's a fantastic manager, absolutely brilliant. But, and I'm sure results-wise, if he'd have come in, he'd have done a fantastic job. But it just wasn't what we wanted to see, was it? We want attacking football at West Ham. That's, that's what we asked for. We asked to see a bit of good football, a bit of flair, a bit of skill, a bit of bravery. So they've done the right thing there. They've, they've hired someone that really is going to buy into that philosophy. We're going to see a great brand of football. I just hope he's going to get the players in to support that, fingers crossed. Um, I think my main two targets were still Emery and Fonseca. I think with Fonseca, again, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really know a lot about him. It was just I started reading about him when we were linked and I thought, I like this. He, he's something a bit different. He likes the high press, which I've been a massive fan of ever since Klopp came to Liverpool. I think I think that's it's absolutely fantastic to watch. So I would have loved us to adapt that sort of um, brand of football. But nonetheless, like I say, with Pellegrini, it will be exciting. So let's just hope it's the right appointment, fingers crossed. Um, there's no reason to suggest it wasn't be. Just because I didn't fancy him doesn't mean it's not the right appointment. A lot of people wanted him, so so I can hold my hands up, fair play. Um, like I say, just fingers crossed. We see some football for once and go and attack for the cups. I think that's that's vitally important for us. I don't think we're going to be we're not going to be challenged anywhere near the top six. So we might as well just enjoy the season, and by enjoy the season, I mean watch some very good you know attacking football, and um, and have a good run in the cups and have a good go at them. So yeah, fingers crossed as far as that's concerned. Um, on the playing side of things. Um, seen a lot of people say about sell this player, sell that player, sell that player. And that's more than understandable because we've been let down by a lot of these players in this squad now for the past couple of seasons. So I completely understand that. I'd just issue a word of caution though in the sense that 
I wouldn't necessarily be selling all these players. I'll be upgrading on them, but not selling them. Um, Kiate being an example there, I wouldn't sell him. We already need somebody in his position. So to sell him means we've got to we've got to bring in a couple in that position, which you end up with a massive turnaround of players. If we sell five, we've basically got to bring in ten, which I think it's a dangerous game to play. It might sound silly, but I think it can unsettle the squad, and I don't necessarily think it's a great thing to do. I mean, I look at Stoke last summer. I think they did a similar thing. I don't know exactly, but I'm sure they bought in about 10 players and sold about 10 players. They didn't get a lot of success from that. So, And we even did a similar thing, to be fair, when we moved into London Stadium. We just bought too many in too quickly, and it didn't work out. It's almost as if last summer's transfer strategy was was the right thing to do. Bring in sort of four players that are going to go straight into your first 11. But they just then went and sold too many, which was just absolutely ridiculous. It just left us too thin, as we all know. It was, it was just silly. So I'd like to do a, do a, see us do a similar thing this summer. In the sense that we bring in four or five that are going to come in straight to the first 11. But just don't just don't let too many go. Just make sure the squad's not left too light. I think that's massively massively important. We struggle with injuries every single year. I, I don't think I've ever known a time where we haven't. So to sell all these players, I think would be would be lunacy. You want to be in a situation where you've perhaps got the likes of Obiang and Kiate on the bench. Both, you know what I mean. Give yourself a bit of strength and depth there. So that's sort of how I see it. What I also really don't want to see is the likes of Yaya Toure. Nothing against the bloke. I think he's been an absolute fantastic player for the Premier League over the years. Unfortunately, I think he's finished now. It might sound harsh, but he's been nowhere for the past two years. And we've already got a very ageing squad. We really need to inject some youth and pace into this squad. We've, we've been desperate for it. We know last season... It was always the case. People always said that Noble's legs were gone. He couldn't cover the ground. He wasn't quick enough. And they're expecting Yaya Torre to come in and slot into that same position. Well, not for me. Not at all. So, and I do think that central midfield area is going to be vital under Pellegrini. I'll, just a quick look at how he, how he sets up tactically. I've not seen him use the... I might be completely wrong on this. But I've not seen him use the 4-3-3 very often. Um, where you can sort of get away with it a little bit there, with that. But with a 4-2-3-1, which he seems to like, it's vitally important that you've got some legs in them two central positions. You really need some legs and a bit of pace. You need to cover that ground. You also need you need people who are very good on the ball. Um, and also 4-4-2, which he goes to, which it's even more important that the two there are very mobile, fit, and um, can cover the ground and have a bit of pace about them. So, no, the idea of Yaya Toure is just it's absolutely ridiculous for me. We need to be finding... I've already alluded to Spurs with Pochettino earlier. I'm going to do it again. I can't stand them, but I've got to give them credit for... Some of the business they've done in, in recent times. And that's we need to be finding the next Moussa Dembele. That's what we need to be doing. Not going after everybody else's cast-offs after they're done with them. It's just, it's just not right. We've got, to be, we've got to be building a project here now over the next couple of years, I think. And gradually adding quality and youth to the squad. And hopefully Pellegrini's the man to mould them together and bring us that bit of success that we all crave. So yeah, fingers crossed. Like I say, trying to be positive. I'm not trying to be the negative one here. You know, I just I I just can't hide the fact that when it when the link was first made to Pellegrini, I was a little bit underwhelmed at the time. Um couldn't help that, it was just how I how I felt. I had an idea in my mind of what direction I wanted us to go and that was sort of coming away from that. But now he's here, we'll all get behind the fans always do. Fans always get behind whoever comes in. So fingers crossed he can give us what he want what we want and at least we see some attacking football which we've we've not seen in far too long. So anyway, I've rambled on for quite a while now. Um thanks very much for listening. Appreciate it. See you soon.